welcome back. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a new variant that was coded, uh, I think, by Navaton. Um, I've already got his name incorrect, so let's go over to Leeches and take a look at uh, the new variant he added. Um, Flick Chess. Naravon. Um, and so we saw that the other day I was trying to integrate his changes. Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Here, let's click on this. Um, integrating his changes over from GitHub where uh, he was missing a couple things, but he eventually put them there and I spent a lot more time integrating this all and then doing a little bit of testing, played a couple games, figured out it broke the player profile page, tried to refactor things, create a separate rating category, create a games display, Unfortunately, the TV view is probably not going to work um, until I find a way to encode uh, knock chess moves as, or uh, flick chess moves uh, until I find a way to um, encode those moves as uh, standard algebraic notation moves, which is going to be a feat in itself. Um, so for those curious about what the variant is even about, um, since I have no willing victims, um, I'll just start with the description here. Flick your pieces in order to eliminate your opponent's king. Um, now that sounds pretty silly, right? Um, so let me see what I can do about playing a game. Since I am currently the only player on this server, and since I happen to know for a fact that Stockfish does not understand this variant, shocking I know but um, like if I play this with the machine oh okay never mind I I actually properly filtered this so you can't um, play the new variant against the machine not until Stockfish understands how to play this which might take a little while and then once it does understand this uh, we're all doomed but um, in the meantime it's still fun to play I mean in theory, engines have already solved anti-chess, and we still play that. Not that Stockfish has, but there are engines out there that can play a perfect game of anti-chess. Um, so, let's pick a random side. Now, uh, you see I took the avatar that they use for training, um, the whole target practice or training icon. I've stolen that. Um, and I'm using that for this flick chess variant until such time that somebody produces an avatar for me or an icon. Um, so let me see if I can get on a separate window here and engage my own seek somehow. Um, it's going to look clunky as heck, but I'm going to have to log in as a different username. And since I don't have two usernames on this server, I'm going to have to borrow a username. Um, oh, I should probably drop the URL in the uh, chat window here. Let's see, I have the chat window open. So, did I have it over here? Nope. All right, well, so here's the URL uh, of my home server. And I'll have to come up with a way to automatically print that URL on demand. Uh, let me see if I can type in a command to do that. Or I could take a look at my list of Nightbot commands. Um, so my whole point here is, well, uh, my whole point was that I wanted to show off this new variant. And so I guess I should not delay too much in doing so. Even though it's just me at the moment, um, I'm just clicking through trying to add a command to print out that URL. Whatever. Uh, so, where can I go to log in? Oh, right, to so that URL on uh, Chromebook here. And then I want to log in as a different user on this device. Let's see, hopefully that didn't log me out here. No, although refreshing did lose my seek. So, 
Uh, we'll see if this works. AI level one. Okay. So we're going to create a game of flick chess. Uh, and I should see that here momentarily. Assuming I'm not excluded. Oh, I've got to include that in my cert, uh, my filter of games that I see. Um, it says casual or rated are visible. Um, oh, right, right, right. Gosh, this is not going to work either because um, the AI is not capable. Like, I picked the account AI level 1, and I forgot that account's not capable of um, playing against humans in the lobby because it's marked as an engine account, as it should be marked as an engine account. But, um, yeah, the filtering here is a bit uh, restrictive, so we're not seeing AI level 1's seek out here. That would be something I could actually fix. Um, and I guess I'll fix that while we wait for another person to show up to play this variant against. I have played a couple games. Uh, I'm not sure if the next game's going to work or not. But um, Let's see. So do I have a link for... I've got a link for the Relay Chess server. Um, that should be updated to use RelayChess.org. So I'll update that. Submit. Um, now we'll add a command. Um, test. Uh, there we go. Hopefully it all. Um, okay, I've got fifteen custom commands under Nightbot. The newest one being exclamation point test. Very cool. So I can just type that here. And yep, Nightbot knows where my server's at. All right. Um, oh, right. I'd forgotten. Uh, I'd forgotten my server is uh, some commits behind. Um, the upstream changes. So let's see um, what I can do about that. You get remote V, which shows all my remotes. You get status, shows my current branch as well as my status. Uh, master will show me. Uh, okay. So. I'm apparently missing the eight upstream changes that I'm behind. Um, so I've got to go over here and figure out are these worth getting for the purposes of today's demo. Practice icon for double check. Um, searchable game results are uh, new practice icons. Oh, that's cool. Uh, allow success on non winning position. Fix. Uh, <laughs> computer evaluation SF parser. Ordinarily, I would find that quite important. Um, curious what that's about. Um, <laughs> so wait, what changed here? He changed the variable m to match, and he changed the regular expression, I presume. Um, I'm confused. Is that not the same thing? Is that a functional change? Where's the fix here? Um, match equals text.match, stockfish version by, and so forth. Uh, engine version is equal to match and match1. I do not understand how this fixes anything because um, the lines that were removed are functionally equivalent to the lines that were added. Unless I'm missing something pretty silly, which maybe I am. Now let's center that code change a little bit more. 
can you figure out what was changed here? Because I sure can't. Um, just kidding, but... <sighs> I don't see the difference. I'm looking at that just one more time here. I do not understand. It's not like this pattern stockfish, parentheses, by uh, slash changed. Um, it's not like that pattern changed, and it's not as if this expression following changed. Eh, whatever. We'll assume it's fixed somehow. Um, improved practice defense success messages, new practice icons. I don't have the practice data, so much of this doesn't immediately apply to me. Implement finite duration to tenths. Um, well, this is new functionality. So you can get uh, a duration as tenths of a second. Uh, it's not critical for what I'm doing, but it wouldn't hurt for me to get up to sync. Uh, preserve new lines and study practice comments. New practice icons. It's got a Trojan horse. We've got... Um, what's this? A bolt and a shield. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's all new functionality. I will merge that at some point, but it's not critical for today's demo. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm up to date. Uh, let's see. Uh, so yeah, here's the branch uh, by N. Holbert. Um, wait, why have I not starred this? I need to star this. Star. Watch. Yes. Yeah, I need to keep an eye on what he's doing, as well as give him credit where it's due. And I have given him credit, because his whole name and avatar and everything now shows under his branch in my repository. Um, he committed his changes on the master branch. I've elected to take these changes and put them on a branch named after him. Um, though in hindsight, perhaps Flick Chess would have been a better way to name it, but whatever. Um, uh, so, code on GitHub's all up to date. Um, I was just explaining how he contributed all this code uh, I was asking, is there anybody interested in playing it? Um, well, he also showed a demo of himself playing it on his instance of Lee Chess. Then we got a picture here of Magnus. Um, I would go through and show the video, except it's copyrighted again, which is unfortunate. Um, but, you know, I said, hey guys, if anybody wants to go over here, um, I'm trying to implement this variant and trying to add spectating support. Um, all right, so I've been delaying a little bit, but it seems like still nobody's awake at this hour, and I can't blame them. Um, not everybody's a morning person. So let's see if I can either... I guess I need to create a new account or I need to log out. Probably easier to log out than to create a new account. So let's do that. Sign out. All right, sorry for the blinding light. Let's go back to the dark theme. So let's create a game of knock chess or flick chess. I'm always gonna get that confused. Um, I was saying that I could improve the permissiveness of the lobby such that a player who's not an engine could see seeks that are from engines and have them clearly identified as this is an engine seek, but i um, not doing that right now. So, um, let's see, I need to change my filter over here to include flick chess, and it is included, and here we go. So you're asking, like, what's the big deal? This looks very much like a normal chess game, does it not? Well, except for one little thing, so, um, let's see, does this work? 
Oh, does this not work as an anonymous player? Here, let's abort and rematch. And that way I can take the white pieces. So the difference here is that I can wind up this piece and chuck it. Um, and this was working yesterday. At the very end of yesterday, this was working. Uh, it's not working at the moment. I don't know why not. Let's take a look at the console. Console doesn't say anything. Why ain't that a damn shame? Um, so... Pieces are moving normally, which they shouldn't be doing. Um, i got to figure out how to enable this variant. So where is the logic for that? Where's the UI? I guess that'd be in the UI layer, like app. Uh, grab flick or lick in here. Um, recursively, okay. Recursively, case insensitive, looking for flick. Um, leechess.flick.js is what we're looking for. Um, I guess I need to recompile stuff. It wouldn't hurt, although I'm not seeing how it would help, but um, I did forget to do this for what it's worth. So we're going to see whether recompiling all the things actually makes stuff work better. Don't need GitHub, don't need to show the community page. Here's a nice image of Carlson while we wait. Um, no, seriously, let's see if this fixes anything. I'm suspecting that somehow when I introduce a separate rating category for the game, somehow I broke it. Um, I'm not sure how. But yeah, the key idea is here you could like wind up a piece and then chuck it toward your opponent's pieces um, for a lack of being able to kick the piece using your fingers. You're not able to do a kick online. You could just... Um, uh, hopefully I can demonstrate this soon. Because I did have this working earlier, and then I broke it. And breaking it's my fault. Um... So, unfortunately, that's actually going to take a while to compile. Um, I suppose I could look through uh, the GitHub changes relative to uh, this variant. So, here's the branch. Here's the six commits that have been done. Um, so, here's Nipshak. Uh, and then there's adding the sub-module for being able to move the pieces. Um, I wonder if the fact that I'm eight commits behind is actually the problem. Uh, I guess we'll find out momentarily. So, yeah, I added in uh, a separate category for this game. And um, I'm not sure why so much is highlighted in red here. All I did was just introduce this uh, object flick chess and uh, said that it's going to be a separate category over here and introduced a performance type and a whole rating system for the game and uh, so on and so forth. Just lots of files where we were doing things for other variants. I just added in flick chess as a variant. Um, now, the fact that that might be a variant might be breaking some of the UI code, uh, which is what I should be looking at, is, actually, I could go not from, that's not where I wanted to go. Uh, I want to go back to this branch, look at our commits, and see um, 
what specifically changed in the app folder, which does, I think, some of the UI uh, layer. Oh, I can't access that from here. Well, I mean, surely, though, the app folder did have some changes in it. Um, <laughs> the mystery deepens. So, so what are we doing? I mean, I could show, like, when I added the flick chess rating and TV category, um, I did move a couple files in the chess submodule. Um, so it's called flick chess now rather than Nick Jock. Uh, so we're using English, but um, not seeing where I did that initially. Have I not pushed my changes? I mean, I could have sworn I have, but... Um, so... You remember how we were looking at uh, the Leela project? Well, we want to go over and also look at Scala Chess, which I forked. And over here... Um, this is called With Nipjok. Uh, yeah, there we are. So I did rename this to an English name because I could not spell that Nipjok for my life. Um, I mean, I'm sure I could eventually, but I made so many typos trying to um, implement that across all the separate files. And eventually I resolved, well, ultimately this wants we want this to be in English anyhow. So I'm going to do this in English. My main point of contention there was whether or not to capitalize uh, the C in Flick Chess. Um, so I did capitalize it in the object name, but I did not capitalize it in the variant name because there's precedent for not capitalizing C in Chess. If you go up here, oh goodness, that's bright, and you see Anti-Chess um, and Chess 960, there's, uh, admittedly, Chess 960 starts with the C, but my point is that, like, Chess itself is not a thing that we capitalize across these variants by convention, so I'm not going to invent a new convention. Um, what else? Oh, there, and then there was his change to initially do the implementation of this, which is cool. It works great. Um... Is it possible that I missed something when making changes? So variant.scala um, and nipjock.scala. Here I changed nipjock. I moved it to flick chess and changed some of the lines there. Here I changed variant accordingly. That all looks okay to me. I'm not seeing any issue there. So it's still compiling. Uh, Lee Chess is a big project, in case you didn't know. It's got tons of dependencies. Um, it really follows the... Uh, I was going to say don't repeat yourself design pattern, uh, but it just borrows from a lot of library code. In addition, it is very much in the sense don't repeat yourself. Um, Although there are some contradictions to that, but um, they're quite minimal and trivial. You won't see entire lines of code repeated in very many places. And in places where they are repeated, it's mostly my fault as I'm trying to implement new things and um, understanding that they're not going to get accepted anyway. In particular, um, a change that allows AIs to play as normal users is not ready. So as it's still in its infancy, I can do as I want with it. And then when I'm ready to uh, do a pull request for it, if ever I'm ready for that, then I have to start cleaning things up, um, getting things to some sort of steady state where it can be reviewed. And then once it's been reviewed and we've said that the proof of concept works, um, then the hard work comes of refactoring it to fit with the existing code base. But for in the interim, doing the cheap thing and uh, copying a couple lines of code here and there. Um, let's 
so. Oh. Um, so, is this still compiling? I suspect it is. So we can see here are all the things it's compiled, here are all the things it's compiling. Uh, oh, I was gonna say, I did say at one point that I needed to allow uh, the project to compile with warnings. Um, I have not yet allowed that, so I'm not sure when it does finish compiling uh, how it's going to work. Also not clear uh, how I managed to compile it yesterday. Um, but somehow I did. But I'm um, skeptical of my own approach now. That's not a good thing. But, oh well. I would play with the machine while I'm waiting, but the machine's quite occupied, as you can see from the test page. Um, uh, my machine's still contributing three cores to the Stockfish testing queue. Should actually be the Stockfish variant Stockfish, or whatever we want to call this testing queue, but whatever. Stockfish for variants. I, I still need a name for this. Like, I've been calling it Stockfish, and that works pretty well. Um, someday I'll come up with a more uh, apt name. Some people have suggested variant fish, but uh, at some point, um, I, I mean, no, it just becomes too confusing. Um, like stockfish itself has a meaning, um, and so yeah. I, what I think might be more appropriate would be like variant stockfish or stockfish for variants, but whatever. Is it a chess version of marbles? Uh, essentially, it's very similar, except um, the difference is uh, in flick chess, if you kick a piece and it hits your opponent's piece, um, then that piece is going to go flying off the board. So, um, Perspective of how far you kick it. Whereas I think in marbles, um, whatever marbles are still in the circle are considered on the board. In flick chess, if you hit a piece um, of your opponent's, it's just gone. Um, but yeah, that would be a good thing for me to clarify in the variant page, which you can find again at this URL slash variant. Um, let me put the server link out there again. I'm still compiling things at the moment, but yeah, you know, the last set of rules are flick your pieces in order to eliminate your opponent's king. Um, uh, I'm baffled as to why this takes so long to compile. Yes, my machine's doing other things, but um, we compiled this yesterday and it worked just fine. So recompiling things shouldn't take very long. I would assume. I might be assuming too much. Um, let's see, we're using some third-party libraries that have warnings in them, and that's okay. Um, as long as our own code doesn't have warnings, it does compile. And I want to change that at some point to even allow warnings during compilation, and we could always disable that later. But um, So... Yeah, why don't I actually take a look? Well, no, actually, this scale of chess change is quite minor. Uh, we already looked at it, so looking at it again is not going to change the state of affairs. Uh, the whole point is that we just add a new variant, and um, it has a type, and that's about it. It gets list added to the list of variants, and that's that. I don't need this testing queue open. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I have not even attempted this from a mobile device. I would assume the opposite, um, that it's a lot easier to control a mouse than it is to control a touch screen. So I would assume that a touch screen user would have a really heavy disadvantage, um, but I'm not sure. Maybe there's some clever way to use a touch screen device with this, but bear in mind that at present, uh, 
I think the only uh, interface that's capable of connecting to this server would probably be John Chernoff's, um, uh, what did he call it, Funk Chess. Uh, I think that would be the only client at present that you could adapt. That, I mean, yeah, you could download the Leechess uh, Android or iOS app source code, but that takes a lot of configuration and steps to set up. But I imagine somebody could download Funk Chess and use that to drag and kick pieces and such, but. Uh, I'm not sure how well that would interact with this JavaScript that we're compiling. Um, oh, I'm just trying to give him credit. That's all. He's done a number of good things, and he claims like nobody gives him credit for his stuff, or not really, but um, so that's why I'm breaking out his real name. Yeah. I'm not sure how you'd want that to work on a touch device. Like, uh, I was intending to demo this, and unfortunately, I happened to break this somehow in the time between I last tested it and the time I'm trying to demo it. Um, but the way it works is you drag a piece, drag, oh, never mind. I can't do that from here. Click, drag, hold, and release. Um, I don't even think you have to kick it as part of that. I think you just wind it up and then let go. And that simulates how much, it's kind of like a pool queue, the way it's currently implemented. Um, I'm sure I could find the JavaScript for it here somewhere. We've got all this dot .idea code or directory stuff, which I assume was added by like IntelliJ idea interface or NetBeans or not NetBeans, but Eclipse. Um, I'm sure one of those GUIs was used to help design this code. And I'm not familiar with how that particularly works, but I was able to merge in this code to my project and see what happens. Yeah, putting some spin on the pieces could be fun too, especially if each piece had a different kind of spin. All right, um, so where's the JavaScript? main.js, is that what we're looking for? flick gulp file.js um, there might be some weird caching thing going on because uh, my version number differs from the official server version number but uh, I want to look for flick.js that's not working um, oh ui slash flick the where this is reposited um, so I think this is a this is not an optimized version of the code this is just the source code period um, <laughs> yeah I'm not sure how that works Oh, this is the gulp task for obtaining the flick code. Um, <laughs> we got one for atomic.js, blind.js, blur.js, and so forth. Do I need to create one for uh, flick itself? Is that what I'm missing? I'm still curious how I managed to break this. Keyboard move .js. <laughs> uh, I want to know how you can play flick chess with the keyboard. I'm going to wager you can't. Uh, okay. That's for the rest of Lee Chess to access Mithril without having to include it a second time. Cool. So there's a thing called flick ground. Oh man. I'm sure we'll figure this out. I'm sure we'll get there. Oh my goodness. Have we compiled yet? Yes, we've compiled. Um, can I refresh? No, I cannot refresh. Check it out. Pimped future's broken. Oh man, we can't have pimps anymore. Just kidding. 
Um, I, yeah, I don't know what that's about. Let's try that again. Okay. Let's try just the home page. That uh, didn't work. Um, okay. What can I try next? I suppose I could try terminating the server or seeing how it's, what's going on server side, but um, terminate server. Come on, you can terminate any second. Okay, now run the server. Um, hopefully this will work. All right, so we got the uh, down page, which I keep mentioning that I should change that. Um, let's go change it. Crap, leechest.org is down star. I don't think that works because, oh, never mind. Never mind, this is static content. Um, so we want to change this um, where it says leechest.org and Source available, globals on start, exception initializer error. Hey, does anybody know what this one means? Anybody know what this one means? Probably means that I messed something up. Um, well, here's what we're going to do. Let's upgrade to the latest version. Acknowledge that we're going to, what's the word? Uh, cut your losses. So we're going to acknowledge that I've just messed up here. And it's going to take a little bit of time to get this going. So I've terminated the server yet again. Um, you know, it occurs to me maybe that, no, never mind, that the static content is served up by um, my local server. So yeah, now it's got my URL there. So that'll prevent people from panicking. Um, uh, people being, I don't know, any moderators of the official Lee Chess site who may be happening to watch the stream and see the screenshot. At least now it doesn't say Lee Chess right there. So, yeah, that's better. Um, uh, so what do we got? Oh, right. Um, get status says I've got local changes. Oh, including that server error page. So I've already got things stashed. Um, so I'm going to get stash apply. Get status. Um, gosh. Get reset head on this. Status, get diff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I messed this up. Whatever. I'm just going to undo the change I just made, which sounds quite silly. Um, or maybe I... Whatever. I don't need that change to be stashed anymore, and I'm not sure how to use multiple stashes. And things get really confusing for me. So get checkout. Uh, we're gonna obliterate that AI related change, get stash clear, get stash to cache my local changes. Um, get checkout master. Here, let me put us up here. Get pull origin master just to show that GitHub and my repo are in sync, which they are. Get pull upstream master to get the eight changes that I didn't previously have. Get check out my branch, which is AI user new. Get rebase master to apply my changes on top of that. Get check out, um, uh, what's the branch name? 
git branch dash v git checkout in Holbert. Git rebase that on top of master. Git stash apply. Okay, so uh, as long as everything compiles and should, uh, we can push all the changes. So let's just push everything. Origin master. Um, so we push that. My local repo has the eight changes which I got from upstream. Force push. Um, origin AI yeah, user new to include the local changes get push f origin and holbert to also include those eight changes sandwiching them in between his development um, and I my development and um, upstream development so now everything's up to everything's synced but now I need to recompile stuff um, so uh, compile.sh indicates wait oh install.sh uh, shows like everything I do for an installation um, some of this had to do with like SSL certificates and automated steps for applying changes and so forth I think I want to simplify this now and rename it. So as long as there's not already a build.sh, and there isn't, I'm going to rename that to build.sh. Um, then edit this, cutting out things that I don't need. Uh, so a lot of this I couldn't remember at first. It did get quite involved. Uh, don't need that recipe for stashing and applying changes. I think this is better. Am I missing anything here? Or do I have anything here that doesn't need to be here is the question. So we get submodules as needed, um, build our dependencies, compile the project, build the front end, um, Oh, is SVG optimized? I've heard a rumor that that... Also, I don't need to install Stockfish uh, anymore. Nor do I need to install um, Polyglot. Uh, so I don't think I have those installers anymore. I don't need them in my build script. Uh, if I remember right, SVG optimized has been moved into the UI builder. Um, grep svg dash optimize Let's see where that ended up um hmm apparently not still well fine i guess i'll add it here then assuming the script is still there so let's check that out ls bin svg yeah it's still there i wonder what svg fix is about let's take a look uh, let's see microsoft edge remove pointless transparent backgrounds these are things i don't need to be doing every step those are one-time things, which I assume have already been done upstream, and I assume I'm already benefiting from um, having those been fixed. So, now if we let's dump the contents of that file, we see now we're going to pull in all the dependencies, build the dependencies, build the project, build the UI, optimize the graphics, um, I've already installed the GOIP database, so I don't need that. Don't need to obliterate any um, puzzle info. Um, and, or select any. Um, nor do I need to create SSL certificates, so I think I'm good. So let's run that and see how long that runs for. I could have done time space and then SH to run all that. 
uh, just to time it. But it'll take what it takes. It's not going to speed up or slow down if I measure how long it takes. So, where did I implement... Um, I'm sorry, where did uh, N. Holbert implement uh, Flick Chess, the UI? <laughs> There's a promotion dialogue. Let's take a look at that. Okay. Um, I'm confused. Why would there be a promotion dialogue for this variant where um, pieces never move properly? Oops, didn't mean to do that. I guess there had to be this promotion dialogue code, even though it will never get exercised in the game proper. Interesting. Um, can I unexpand this? Probably not. Um, mm -hmm. so let's see flick slash src slash all sorts of stuff round socket title view button replay user legacy blind I'm not sure how you would play this in blind mode. Um, that might be a bit tricky. Correspondence, flick chess, uh, crazy drags, crazy views. Okay. So apparently I don't need a separate thing for just... Um, although it wouldn't my, n would not necessarily hurt to have a separate file just for flick chess JavaScript, but... Um, hmm. So we're going to wait for this to finish compiling again. Uh, but yeah, doesn't he look so happy playing this? Um, so let's go back up to the top here. He's messing around with the Lee Chess code base, and he made a rough version of this variant, inspired by the video he later shares of Magnus playing this. Um, and yeah, this is essentially what it's supposed to look like. Um, it says it could be a unique feature, although there's all kinds of issues with this. Um, one being, how would you do the move list? Two being, how's this going to work for spectators? And Three, can you pre-move flicks? Uh, four, how does it work for blind mode? Five, what about correspondence? Six, is it going to do the same thing in every browser, or do you have to use the same browser as your opponent for the physics to come out the same way? Um, seven, are the rules correct? I mean, there's a myriad of questions that are asked, but hey, I can stick the code on my server, and assuming I can comp compile it, and um, I didn't show this, but I did mess up the player profile pages. So now if I'm trying to look at my past Blitz games, I can't see those anymore because of a duplicate database index. That's unfortunate, but that's the risk I took. Um, and so now, um, not sure what else I can do about that. I have not had anything for breakfast. I should probably have something as this compiles. So, would I be incorrect in assuming that nobody's actually played this with a real chessboard?
Well, I'm not seeing. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing this variant listed anywhere. Not even the chess variants database lists this one. So this must be a thing originating in Norway that hasn't yet made its way around the globe. I have played something similar. I've played um, Bug House with people. And there's a rule that... Um, so you're playing this bug house game, but you're not sitting at a table. You're actually out on the lawn. You got like a table on the one side of the lawn, a table on the other side of the lawn. And so to pass pieces um, um, between partners, you have to actually throw them to your partner. And they can be like intercepted in between you and your partner. And if they are intercepted, then it goes into the opponent's hand rather than into your partner's hand. Um, it's pretty silly in itself, but yeah, if you find that you're getting mated, uh, you have got this resource, or even if you're losing on time or whatever, you have this resource where you can pick up your king, chuck it across the playing field, and if you can strike your opponent's king, you win the bug house game. If you miss, well, obviously you just chucked your king, so you lose, but yeah, it's a pretty yeah, unique last grace saving measure. Um, in order to try to save a game of Bug House. I swear I had tested this. I played even a couple games of this this morning. Um, and everything worked just fine. And beyond that, I tested just setting up the position and dragging and chucking the first piece or kicking it um and that worked just fine on many occasions so i'm not sure what i'm running into here i do apologize for the delay because i mean i have to apologize for that um yeah i guess that's what happens when i'm streaming on a budget and um, that budget doesn't have any money in it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's difficult to set things up in advance and guarantee that things are going to continue working having already been set up. new in the world. Huh. Well, bummer. Um, apparently, um, this is announced via IRC, there was a tournament. Uh, apparently I missed this tournament. Or maybe I did. It probably is not ongoing still, because that would be one really long-running tournament if it were still ongoing. Where was this tournament? Okay. Um, 
Yeah, I'm gonna wager that I've missed the event. Uh, that's too bad. Okay, that was... I'm still struggling to find it, whatever it was. Um, uh, maybe I can find it this way. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can find it. Uh, I'm curious. Did he play in this event, if this were an event? No, I'm not seeing it. How about Happy-O? Um, ah. Bummer. I missed it. Whatever. Um, that could have been fun. Maybe next time. So, yeah, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to decipher all this stuff. Oh, I guess the reason that line has changed is so we could add a comment at the end. So we could add flick chess at the end of this. <sighs> um... LL. Or, I'm sorry, 11 is flick chess. I wonder if there is a variant 10, because we see that, like, there's variants 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but if you turn it to 11, then you get flick chess. What happened to variant 10? Does anybody know? So, I'm confused as to what to do while waiting. Hmm. There is a commercial site that has this variant. Um, but I'm not seeking to promote the commercial site. Quite the opposite. So that's why I'm not showing that site. It could be fun to play on that site, but... I want this to work on Leech Us. Well, while we're waiting... Oh, come on. There I go. I've merged my Chrome windows together. And so now we can take a look at um, at the code changes themselves. And just try to understand how this works. Um, so one pretty well, we've already looked at one of the changes. Um, oh, we want to only include. Uh, scale of files as opposed to compiled files. Alright, so this is what we're looking at. We created a separate rating category for the game. Short name is Flick. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to cause any confusion when I go to try to present things, but whatever. Um, Somehow, when I'm loading the UI, I have to know to load uh, the proper, the flick stuff. Um, oops, I need to do this recursively, case insensitive, but not necessarily word-based, because we don't use the word flick all over the place. Uh, 
so yeah, we here see that indeed it's a variant choice. Um, Oh, how great would it be if you could do this uh, variant from a position? You could have flick chess puzzles. You could have flick chess 960. You could have all the things. Um, but, okay. We've taken a look at the UI layer. Now, these modules, I think, are mostly in the background. So I'm curious how we use this code to know which JavaScript to load. That's where I'm getting confused is because like apparently when we're using JavaScript, we're using the wrong one. And we see that there are all these scripts out here that are particular to flick chess. I should maybe search the UI folder. Maybe there are some things that don't compile that are just scripted um, that refer to flick chess. Ah, oh, there's Flickr. It's not what we were looking for. So I guess we do need to search by word. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. That's a lot more stuff than I expected. Um. Oh, here we start. You can flick your pieces at your opponent's pieces, capturing the first enemy piece you touched. You win by capturing your opponent's king. Okay. So I'm curious, how does it know which user interface to provide? Um, so I'm going to search for leechess.flick, apparently. And this identifies the gulp file. Um, so let's take a look at what's in the gulp file that's particular to this variant. Um, so I'm, I've not used gulp before, um, at least not directly like changing this code. I might need to do that. I think this is just saying, take this script and append this script. I'm thinking that's all it's saying. Um, oh, there's even a thing for watching if uh, I flip a chess game, at least in terms of getting access to the script. Uh, so maybe I do need to take a look at this leechess.flick.js. <laughs> I forget how to do a find command. Like there's find and then there's dash print or something. Find UI. Okay, that lists everything in the UI package. I want to know where in there I can find this flick.js. Okay, I want to locate flick.js. There it is. Compiled leechus.flick.js. Um, where does that come from? I'm assuming the UI thing is compiled from somewhere. Oh, hey, look at that SVG cleaner command not found. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where to get SVG cleaner. This is the whole thing about cleaning up the icons 
Um, this is not something I'm going to be able to do at this moment. Um, partial port of Scour to JavaScript. Great. Where do I obtain this? How do I obtain this? How do I install this? Uh, that's a, does a global install. Uh, to do as a command line tool. There's no way that's going to work um, because I don't have permissions on. Oh, I am correct. Nope, I am actually correct. I was about to say I'm corrected, um, but no, I can't do a global install. But I don't want to do a global install. I just want to install it locally. All right. Um, now remember the last step of what we were trying to do was this SVG optimized stuff, which um, still not working. Still command not found. Also, the command is SVG hyphen cleaner as opposed to SVG cleaner. Um, this was last maintained 2015. That's not terrible. Um, the official SVG cleaner was last installed. Oh, hang on. It's over here now. SVG cleaner GUI. Uh, that's not what I want. I don't want a GUI. So, yeah, apparently, even though I'm not looking for a GUI, this is what I want to install anyway. That's cool. Um,. What if I don't want to install it from a release? What if I want to install it from some kind of installation manager? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Also, I have to use QMake. So this is depending upon using QT. You know, I'm going to stick with the one I have um, and just assume that I can change the script. Then SVG optimize. SVG cleaner is going to be SVG hyphen cleaner, assuming that exists. Uh, does that exist? That does not exist. Um, so, how do I remove something? Is it uninstall or remove or what is it? Okay, that worked. So I didn't need that. Um, in fact, I can go back to this and until such time that I have instructions as to how to make that work, we're getting rid of it. Um, and uh, yeah, everything's been compiled, so I should be able to just say simple build tool, show my version and run it. And it'll be running any second now. Okay, loading project definition. It's still blocking on standard input, but that's okay. Resolving strings. I promise you, I did test this multiple times before the stream, and even so, it's still not working. Um, We'll get there though. I might even end up just cutting the video on demand and starting it somewhere around here. Um, console, loading our stuff. Yeah, why don't I just start the video on demand here? As we always do. Welcome back. So today we're going to attempt to play some flick chess. Um, 
so the way this variant works is you can um, kick your pieces toward your opponent's pieces. The first opposing piece you encounter that you knock into is removed from the position. Um, and we're testing this out at the moment, so bear with us if we run into any bugs. So we're going to create a game, 5-8, anonymous, casual game. Um, and then go over here in the separate window and attempt to accept the seek. So far, so good. And the idea is you could like pick this piece, wind it up, and chuck it. Um, now, unfortunately, I made some changes recently which seem to have broken this variant. I'm not sure exactly how, when, or why the break occurs. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have both a development site and a staging site and a production site, so um, so I have to kind of do these things on the fly, uh, all from my dev instance. Uh, let's show you everything that I'm seeing. So what I'm attempting to do is identify what uh, script was loaded and um, how that script is being used. Like, it should have some reference to this concept of flick chess, I would hope. And if it doesn't, it needs to. Um, so sources shows what sources we had to load for the page to work. Uh, this includes all kinds of dependencies. Um, so yeah, we are importing the functions that are necessary for this variant. Just somehow we're failing to engage said functions. Um, so we're going to learn how the code works. Start flick. I mean, we saw start flick is defined somewhere. Um, I wonder, can I search across an entire folder uh, for content? No. can only search one file at a time. So I'm curious why I can't start flicking a piece in this mode. Now let's look at where, what else we've got in this file. Um, I can't maximize the tab, so let's expand it this way, just so we get a little bit more context. Um, so, move on, input, flick, move on, toggle, start flick. How do I know whether or not I'm playing flick variant? because that will trigger what JavaScript we should be using. Um, <laughs> well, the good news is that this code is all in GitHub and that you're more than welcome to peruse it and try to figure out how the code works as I am attempting to um, search this code and understand it. Um, so dependencies main.js does not have a reference to flick. Uh, socket.js does not have a reference to flick. Util, I might be running into a file caching issue of all things. Let me try forcibly refreshing what I've got. Control refresh. Yes. That's uh, still not it. Not a terrible idea. Could be some server-side caching as well, which would be sad. Um, although, what could possibly be cached server-side? I don't know. So we have a chess, a Lee chess ground. Now I saw there was some mention of a flick ground in the um, JavaScript. 
I'm not sure where I would find that declared here. Um, hmm. So we are playing variant flick chess. That's there for sure. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll have better odds trying to troubleshoot this from the source code. Um, so how do I identify whether I'm playing flick chess or not is the question. Um, grip wr actually grip r and oops in the ui directory and see like are there still any references to Nipsa Jacques um, in that directory? No. Um, at this point, I'm still assuming that there's some logic error somewhere. Um, OK. So we got variant.js. Um, should probably change that message. Not that I need to, but um, flick chess game. Okay, but that's not what we're looking for. That's just the lobby code. Um, so. And if, likewise, if I look for Nipsa, I'm not going to find that either. Uh, even with a case insensitive search, I don't find any matches. Hey, welcome. So I'm trying to figure out why I broke the code and how I broke it. It's unfortunate. As I was just looking to demo this and then say, oh, look, it all works great. Now let's try to add spectating support. And it worked yesterday. And I had multiple games of this variant, and it's, it was working just fine. Um, so now I get to look through the source code that another developer developed and attempt to understand it. Um, mm -hmm. So Here's some code minus a lot of directories. Um, it's interesting that this mentions um, uh, mentions his user account quite a bit. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if that's problematic in any way. Hopefully not. Um, mm -hmm. All NPM. I mean, maybe it's trying to obtain this source code from a different site, though that doesn't make sense. Um, flick hyphen chess as opposed to flick chess could be a difference worth looking out for. Well, this is just the package JSON, it's just um, packaging code. Or configuration. Um, oh, there's a flick directory. Why don't I go there? Yeah, let's go into there and see how this code works. Um, we're gonna first take a look at the build file, see if there's anything silly I'm missing here, but no, there's not. Um, so then take a look at source. And how is it that we know that we're playing this variant? Um, like there's atomic code, there's promotion code, but there's correspondence code and crazy house code. Um, uh, I don't want to use vim, but rather view, so I'm not creating all these temp files out there that confuse um, my environment. So, 
somewhere here. Uh, there must be a check to see, like, what are we doing. Uh, view main.js. Actually, what I'm not, what I'm looking for isn't this code itself. What I'm looking for is the code that says to use this code. Um, by the time I'm in this directory, I, I can probably assume, and maybe that's an unsafe assumption, but I could probably assume that if I'm in this directory, that I'm using the, if I'm playing this game, I'm playing this variant. Uh, But hmm. grip flick everywhere here, excluding the flick directory itself. Uh, it's still a lot of stuff. So how does it know which JavaScript to invoke? Like there's flickground.main.js. Um, I could see what's invoking flickground. So require this. Here's socket.js, but that's just for. Why would you put your game logic in the file called socket.js. That wouldn't make sense. Um, <laughs> um, I want to ignore all these package.json files. And ignore flickground itself. Wait. I said exclude equals flick slash everything. Um, apparently that exclude notation doesn't work. That's confusing. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I have to say exclude equals home, actually star slash flick star. That didn't work. Uh, exclude equals flick slash star star. Is that going to work? No, that's NetBeans style excluding. Um, maybe it's just a proper regex. No. OK, well, I'm going to have to enumerate each of these one at a time and see is flick ground referenced in analyze? No. Is flick ground referenced in computer evaluation? No. Is it referenced in challenge? Nope. How about chat? How about chess? No. I'm curious, is flick referenced in chess? No. How about chess lee? No. Common? How does it know which script to use? How about round, the event communicator? That's used for flicker, but not for flick. Um, let's see, game? Nope. Insight? How about we do a search and grep dash v excluding everything starting with flick. OK, so and then grep dash v for flicker, which is not what I'm looking for either. So let's clear the search and show you it again, just all by itself. Um, so those are all the modules to be compiled as build colon or I'm sorry, build contains this apps string showing all the things to compile. I assume to compile. Um, 
then there's Lobby, which has Legacy and Variant. And my error in all my judgment here might have been that I'm looking for the wrong thing. Um, so let's take a look at Variant.js. Lobby, Source, Variant.js, Flip Chess is contained in there. Um, Okay, uh, there's legacy.js, which I'm, I mean, on account of this having the word legacy in it, I'm already inclined to avoid it. Um, prep, flick, ground, in the UI, it's not referenced in the UI, in modules, it's not referenced in modules. It's referenced all over the UI stuff, but I don't know where here to look to see this is the point at which we expect to enable uh, flick ground for a board. Like, um, uh, we can also go through the browser and take a look at all our sources that we're using set some breakpoints in various places, but there's no way that these breakpoints are going to trip anything. Um, so let me just, for example, refresh this page. Okay, we do hit that breakpoint. Um, so meaning we're starting a socket uh, I don't need this breakpoint. Let's continue on to the next one. Um, not sure what that's about. Somehow I got a notification there, but that's not where I was expecting to hit a breakpoint. So, open in mobile app, flick, comma, chat, if data tournament show the tournament, socket equals socket. Um, so basically we're, we should be opening up the socket to play flick chess. In addition to the socket we use for making moves, we have another socket apparently for performing flicks. Um, so and we set up the clock and set up everything else that needs to be set up and just continue the script but I'm not seeing okay let's try that again because I forgot where I need to put my breakpoint okay let's put a breakpoint on 1039 let's put another breakpoint um, I don't know. Actually, 1039 is just fine. Events, TV channels, function. Where can I look here to see whether a flick event is occurring? Here you can see if we're receiving flick events. Um, query selector dot flick. That might be the issues that we're looking for flick rather than flick chess. I don't know. Um, let's put a breakpoint at 11.03. And yeah, I'll just watch how this executes. Refresh, can reload, recycle. I understand it's my turn but I'm not seeing any of my breakpoints get hit. I don't even necessarily care about most of those, but, um, so wait, start flick. Surely starting a background service, that background service must be including this line of code, but I'm not seeing an invocation of start flick. Um, 
like somewhere something in the code base must be calling that um, for it to be useful to declare that. Like we've declared start flick, but where are we consuming it? Let's find it. It's declared in main.js. I don't see where it's being consumed. So uh, maybe at this point I actually go back to GitHub and start looking at um, how was this initially implemented. Uh, let's go back up to the top of this revision. It's a lot of code. Can I just use home? Yeah, home goes to the top of the web page. Um, so we're going to look at his, um, his branch of this. Oh, but I don't think GitHub allows you to search um, code of forked repositories. So I've instead got to go, um, I'm not sure where. Let's first make sure that I'm importing my dependencies properly. Um, so there's a submodules file, or a submodule file that I think goes by the name of git modules. Um, indeed, here it is. Uh, but it might not be checked out on the appropriate branch. So let's go into module slash test, get branch dash v showing what branch we're on. We're actually on the correct branch. Um, so somewhere in here, there's got to be something related to flick chess. Uh, there, okay, so we found something. Let's filter that down based on file extension, looking only for scale of files, and show that just up here for you. Um, yeah, lucky. Like Holpert said, uh, this this is the only um, only change he had to make to scale up chess to enable this variant. Didn't have to do anything special. Um, I'm confused. It could be the this mixed casedness of um, the variant that's causing issues. Uh, so we have flick chess, flick chess. It could be in our JavaScript that we're checking incorrectly for this. Um, uh, flick chess with the wrong case. Okay. Um, so, I don't expect this to make any difference in terms of functional, uh, functionality stuff, but flick chess is all lowercase, um, for what that's worth. Uh, colon wn override, uh, we're going to replace flick chess with a lowercase version of it. It and go back here. I have to do UI build chess. Um, well, that's not even the thing we wanted to build. We want to build lobby. My mistake. Whatever. If it builds everything, that's okay too. Yeah, apparently UI slash build doesn't take any parameters. Um, so the UI code should be fine. 
Um, I kind of wish I'd started that in the background. Oh, task chess, chess is not your gold file. So, yeah, I want it just to compile lobby. Because that's the module I changed. Now, as for whether that's the thing I needed to change or not, who knows. But this is skipping over all the modules um, that aren't the lobby module. Um, I guess if, like, one of these UI modules had um, a lobby task within it, it would execute that task, but there is no such thing at this time. So it's skipping over things like the tournament schedule UI, the uh, basically every UI that we don't need to recompile is already compiled, so skip all those. It's just the lobby one that had to be rebuilt. Um, let's forcibly reload this page. Yeah. Didn't think that would make a difference. Um, but, whoops. Uh, grip WRL for flick chess. Uh, all right, so I've got log files indicating that flick chess is not a member of chess variant variant. See, that would have been good to know. I'm not sure why. I mean, there's so much logged when we do compilation that I could have overlooked that. That could be entirely on me. Um, also, there's compiled JavaScript, like leechess.lobby.js. Um, more to the point, I found the bug. <laughs> Let's start there, right? Uh, bug is user error on my part, where uh, I decided to change Nipshock to flick chess. Couldn't figure out how to do it with mixed case. Looked and saw that for anti-chess, it's all lowercase, and started making changes. And didn't fully assess just how enormous this project is. Um, so that's at least part of the bug. Um, so where else can I go to identify uh, potentially buggy code? Let's see. Well, I need to rebuild the round view, the one that processes all the events. I wonder if there's a unit test for building the UI code. Probably not, because how would you test that? Um, a unit test for each particular thing, like the lobby, like the tournament code, like leechess insights, like the puzzles, like the event notification system. E even if you were to write unit tests for that, you would need to unit test it in every supported browser, which could be challenging. I don't know a way that you could automate that from a script, <laughs> especially since many of them are UI, like presentation sorts of things. Um, all right, cleaning up. So, what happens if we refresh now? This is optimistic on my part. I don't suspect that's going to work. Um, Where's flick chess and all of this? So it's still an all.log. That's okay. I think the log only rolls when I restart the server. It's in compiled leechess.lobby.js um, with the message that flick chess is not a member of the variant. Fan. Well, no, with the message here saying nipsajak. Um, so where do I go to find that? under UI. I don't. Okay. Where do I go under app to find that? It's certainly not under app. Modules, I've already fixed it there. 
it's just in terms of the um, public compiled leeches lobby code that's out of date all right we've reloaded reloaded the page hey look guys we got it working <laughs> okay let's see how long did that take that took one hour 45 minutes for me to identify a bug that I introduced um, this is why you want to do things in steps, people. Uh, for all I've said that I've tested this numerous times, apparently I've not tested it enough. I've made changes that were not necessary, that were supposed to help me understand things better, but I didn't understand things very well to begin with. Um, so if we look at get status, we look at all these changes I've added. Um, we're going to add um, at views, players around, player scala, get add UI slash lobby, get div cache showing what we just added, where we changed flick chess to be um, all lowercase, um, get log to show. Yeah. All right. Um, get diff to show other things that we're not committing. Those don't need to be committed. Get status. Um, fix case comparison. Uh, let's say fix um, flick chess case comparison. Uh, case sensitive. I uh, get push origin and Holbert. I don't think, yeah, I didn't have to change anything in uh, any of my sub modules, so that works just fine. Um, man, that was a mess, but we got there. So now, you can demo this. So you just wind a piece and you flick it. And your opponent refreshes the page. Hopefully can see the move. <laughs> Can't see the move. All right, we're gonna have to abort and try again. This time with both players on the same version of the code. So drag the pawn, flick the pawn, and then the opponent can like, oops, I clicked. My mouse just clicked instead of flicking. Um, let's try that again. Dunk. And then the opponent can chuck their pawn. Uh, you get the idea. And note that the pawn hit the other pawn, but only one of those goes off the board. Uh, yeah, my mouse double clicked again. This particular variant might be challenging if you have a mouse that doesn't work. So, I want to test a theory. That, that theory involves me properly setting this up so I may test it. There we go. Click, drag. I hit two pieces. Only the first one I hit is removed. I wonder, can I pre-move a flick? No. But would that be great? So, yeah. This is going to take a shot at the king. Um, oh no, I clicked. Oh, it's all over. Dun, dun, dun. I wonder how far I can hit these pieces off the board. Like... If I've kicked a piece off the board, can the opponent click it and like try to bring it back on? I don't think so. Either way, um, let's see, can I drag this pawn and chuck it toward the king? Yeah, there we go. Variant ending, white is victorious. So, it's up and running, guys. Have fun with it. We got it working at long last. Um, so uh, saying the next step would be to add the spectating code, right? 
So I think in order to spectate, I'd have to find a way to encode these flick moves as um, as actual moves. That might be a bit tricky using Lee Chess's move encoder. Or I'd need to, a way to replicate the move uh, functionality where you can take moves, undo moves, redo moves, and so forth, and replicate that just for this variant. Um, uh, one thing I forgot to check is like, are there live spectators of the game? Is there the possibility that, like, say I've started a game, say I've like just thrown a pawn out here a little bit, and um, my opponent chooses to add time to my clock because I'm demoing something here. And so opponent just like also kicks a pawn out there. And now I'm going to go over to the current games view and see, hey, are there any flick chess games going on? Um, apparently games do not show in this perspective. And I thought that creating a separate view for that would handle that situation, but apparently not. Um, so let's take back. Oh yeah, let's agree to a take back, because you know, that's a great thing to do. Okay, so that's flick chess. Um, I still don't know what it's gonna take to get Oh, I'm playing anonymously. That's why I was asking the Lee Chess developers earlier this morning, is can I get anonymous games to show up under um, the games view? And so far I haven't found a way to do that. Um, that might be a lot of work. It might not, it might, though. So, um, plus it's not going to even work, because the moves aren't relayed as normal moves, but... Let's take a look at the TV module and see how does it identify games. Um, grep, I don't know. Uh, that's not what I intended. Star is what I was aiming for. Rate is what I'm aiming for. Rating is what I'm aiming for. OK. List of candidates for a game in descending rating order. Now, what if I don't care about a player's rating? What if I want to show all the games in the games view? Um, so there's a TV actor. Um, Actually, let's search for the word games, starting at the top level directory stuff. Um, there should be a routes file here somewhere, identifying that if a person's trying to navigate to the route, starting with the prefix games, yeah, like this so-called search engine, but I want to see live games, not just, yeah, I want to see uh, real-time gameplay. Where do I go to look at that? Um, I'm not sure I'm going to get a whole lot search. Oh, here we are, the routes file. It's in comp slash routes. So to get all the games, we go to TV, or the TV controller uh, to games. So, um, Games that are featured on this channel. Games from primary. Hmm. There's got to be a way to get this to show all the games, not just games by um, registered players. Um, history. Game ID. So yeah, that's a TV thing. That's all channel based, as I suspected. Um, 
Games from primary history IDs. Um, get games, game from history. Get best game, get best and history. What if I just want all the games? Um, Flick Chess looks for fresh blitz games that are. Huh. Wait, is there a correspondence filter here somewhere? I want games that aren't necessarily blitz, that could be any time control. Um, I'm not sure what's the difference between fresh blitz and other things, but. Okay, here's classical. Fresh 60 times 5. Um. I don't know if that's just saying find something where somebody's moved in the last two minutes. And that might be okay. Oh. Except that we're not registering normal moves for these uh, variant games. Still, is the game being played and is it not older than some number of seconds? That we can determine. Um, so. Well, actually, let me ch test one thing. If I go over to leechess.org slash games, and I'm searching for just all the games, are these all by registered players? Let's go to something not as popular, like maybe Racing Kings, or like 960. I don't see any anonymous games anywhere in this list. Uh, here's a game... But yeah, I think these are all by registered players. But there's not a way to go in here and see uh, anonymous games. Um, so Git Games says for a channel, Git Games that filtered by that channel. Um, games from primary. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Locate game repo dot scala. Um, so we're going to go look at this game repo. And there's a function, games from primary, gets the game IDs ordered by, or collection by ordered IDs, um, hmm, is it possible that anonymous games are in a different repository? Um, I don't know. Set rating differences, set rating and differences. Featured candidates. White player. Hmm. <laughs> this might be the thing that I'm looking for. Where, um,. I don't necessarily need to include games that uh, have a player who doesn't have a rating. Yeah, I don't want to ex exclude players based on their rating. Um, I want to include everybody in the candidates. Okay, this is the only function related to candidates, so if I change this, I should be okay. Um, let's try that. And uh, as soon as we refresh any page, um, even from my secondary browser here, 
as soon as I just issue a refresh, things will recompile. Um, uh, so I'm going to, once that successfully refreshes, issue a rematch and see if under Lee Chess Games we can see um, an anonymous game. Uh, I'm curious if we have any more comments on this. Not yet. All right, so I've looked at the code. The code's great. Um, I've got the server running over here, just in case people are wondering. In fact, the last line of this log down there says it is compiling one scale of source. Hopefully, I've not broken everything with that single uh, source change. But maybe I have. You never know. Um, but yeah, this whole candidates now only looks for playable games that have a clock that, um, that are created or updated recently. Now, it's still really strict, but, um, I'm not sure what else I can do about rating. Um... Feature. Okay, that's the only thing here having to do with features. Uh, grep feature. I think that's okay. All right. Has this compiled yet? Yes. Rematch offered. Um, let's see. Okay, we're back to just seeing that one window, so that's fine. You don't get the chance to see my OBS overlay stuff, which is, or my OBS console, which is kind of silly. Oops, I accidentally just kicked that a little bit. Again, my mouse is acting up slightly. Hey, look! The game shows. You don't see the moves, but that's okay. Uh, what happens if I go back? Um, see, so yeah, we're going to take back and then abort the game. And then rematch. And for all, you can see that's the same mini board, but over here. Okay, so the move does not get relayed live. In fact, because not both players have made a move, um, this is how it looks. Oh, it actually occurs to me now that having the pawns shaped that way has some impact on the collision detection. So it's actually important that Black's pieces be oriented the way they are. Now, if somebody's using a user style, they might be able to cheat, which would be hilarious. But, um, like, I could have a user style that makes my pawns enormous and just destroys everything as they go across the board. That'd be funny. But, yeah, that's flick chess. Um... And I think this does drop off of the featured games display at some point. Like I said, I think it shows things that have been created in the last five minutes or updated in the last 40 seconds. I could always change that to just show all games that are in progress, um, which would be kind of cool. You could see correspondence flick chess games <laughs> under that filter. Um, but yeah, unless people want to play rated games, I'm not sure what else to do here other than try to get spectating working. So that once there is spectating, people can just play and we can watch others play. Alright, let me get a beverage.
good old apple juice. Well, I think I actually will try to get try to encode these as moves. It's an extremely large, daunting, and probably impossible task without some guidance, but, you know, where's the fun in taking on challenges um, and not actually doing them? So let's see. Like I was pointing out earlier, um, there have been tons and tons of code changes. You can see them all on GitHub. I at one point counted the number of lines. I think it was somewhere over 15,000 lines of code that had been added or changed. So it's a lot to consider. But anyway, Lee Chess has this um, construct they call a move or drop. Move or drop. Uh, we're going to look for that under modules. Um, you can see there's all sorts of compiled code that referenced it, but um, let's just look for the raw Scala source code. And this is just Scala code that references this construct called a mover drop. Um, I'm probably best served looking for the type definition. Uh, so we're going to do a case sensitive search. And we see right there, um, we've got, uh, it's in player.scala that we use this. It's in parsing model and UCI dump and UCI and package and replay and game and event and UCI memo. And I guess in another game uh, scala file, we have this construct. Um, I think move or drop needs to be augmented to be move or drop or flick. And we need to change the entire architecture, or not the architecture, but just um, not have a separate thing for flick objects. Um, so we've got move or drop, we've got flick, um, which is an event, which is you just drag a piece and chuck it toward your opponent. We've got moves which have an encoding, we have drops which have an encoding. I'm curious if I can encode a flick in a similar manner. Um, it, it's going to be clunky at first for sure, but unless I have these, unless I can figure out how to encode them, um, I'm not sure how to do that either. I should better understand flick first, like this case class flick and compare it to this object move or drop. And once I've got this object or type uh, figured out and I understand the differences between the types, I can attempt to reconcile them into one type that can be used um, to broadcast. Arguably, the UI code could also be unified. Um, so you don't have to have separate board types for flick moves versus these move or drop moves. Um, but I think unless I can find some way to have a socket that listens for these flicks, um, I'm not going to be able to spectate the games, nor am I going to be able to replay them. Um, like, I would probably call this move Pawn A2C6 or just A2C6 or something, and have some way of denoting exactly where the pawn landed uh, with respect to the C6 square. You'd have to measure the distance to each of the squares and figure out kind of sort of exactly where this landed. But it's not even about that. It's about where did you start and what's your angle and um, velocity and so forth. Because where you end up could depend on what pieces you hit. Um, so really it's about, like, when I drag this piece, um, again, I can't undo the moves either. 
Uh, There's no threefold repetition and such either, unfortunately. Can you imagine if this variant had threefold repetition? How great would that be? But yeah, I have to have some way of encoding where all the pieces are, what the move was that just got issued, um, and show this in the move list somehow. Because if a spectator joins halfway through the game, they need to be able to see the current position before the moves start getting relayed. That's the hard part. And then you could always replay the game later. Um, okay, but we did get... We are able to see the game at least, even if the move itself didn't get relayed. Um, so, what are the properties of a flick? It's an event. It's got these attributes velocity, key, win, color, and clock. Now, win is interesting. Like, I could send a... hmm. I'm not sure in terms of um, what gets uploaded versus what gets uh, streamed back to the client. It seems like win would be a thing that only the server should be able to set. But I can wager that the server is not emulating this game. But really, only the server should be able to submit whether the game has been won or not. Um, so that's an interesting thing. Alright, case sum underscore, or clock, clock match, case we have a clock versus case we don't have a clock. Um, oh, so if we have a clock, we're going to, oh my goodness. Um, so what should I take from this? I should take from this that the UI detects whether the game is won, um, and it has a velocity and a key. Um, I think really what I need to take is the velocity and the key. So the key is probably which piece you're moving, because um, you could in theory have multiple pieces of the same type on the same square. So key is really the identifier of what piece you're talking about. And velocity must have a speed and a direction. Um, so let's see if we can find an example of a flick. Um, I need to, if I'm going to use a parentheses, I've got to search in quotes. And let's look inside app. Nope, not inside app. Let's look in the UI. Didn't think I'd find it there either. Under modules, case class flick. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's here's where we find it. Game.scala. Update flick. So this communicates the clock situation, the number of turns that have been performed. Um what the flick itself is, um, so on and so forth, but I want to see where are we calling update flick. Um, so where in modules is that? Game update flick is called from game.scala. Um, oh, that's the definition of the uh, function. What I want to go is to player.scala and find this update flick, uh, which has apply flick. 
Um, now there's separately this thing called apply move or apply UCI here. Um, I think there's also an apply drop. No, there's not. Apply UCI. So I can entirely understand why that developer decided to make this thing called apply flick. Um, however, <laughs> yeah, I need to figure out how to unify some of this together. If not in the player code, at some point, this is going to be unified into creating a mover drop object um, that's actually a move or a drop or a flick. Uh, it has all the attributes that could belong to any kind of one of those moves and figure out what to do about that. Um, also, I'm curious, just from a malicious point of view here, um, I've got in-game preferences, right? Do anonymous users have preferences? Do they not? Menu, nope, I don't see preferences there either. Beyond theming, I thought there's settings that allow you to change um, how pre-moves work and whether you can enter moves with the keyboard and all that good stuff. But I'm not seeing an in-game preferences menu. Instead, I see a chat room. Hmm. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not seeing any way to allow typing in moves through a keyboard. Maybe once we've got more people playing the game, I'll figure out can I maliciously do stuff like entering in a legitimate chess move instead of playing a flick move. And challenging the opponent to enter a legitimate move. But whatever. Um, this is going to be a longer process than I thought to refactor. Um, okay, so there's this UCI thing. UCI.move and UCI.drop are the cases of UCI sorts of moves. Um, I definitely appreciate the abstraction that the Stoovers come up with again, but I don't know if this is going to work. Also, what's NCG up here? Case NCG comma move. I don't know what NCG is used for. Uh, maybe I don't even care. Maybe it's just something that's discarded. Um, so, UCI match. If the UCI is a move, apply a move. Um, otherwise, apply a drop. Um, but I want to add a third case in here, which would be a UCI flick, which would have these attributes of a key and a velocity. Um, obviously no promotion, because that's not relevant there. Game to chest drop map. Oh, I should take a look at the flick ground code. Um, like, how is the physics engine implemented, and can I integrate the physics engine into um, chess ground? 
And then once I can get that physics integrated, then expose, I don't know. Or maybe I do this test-driven development where I first define the interface and then say the physics engine must go here, must implement all the physics. It's probably better to do it that way because the physics can be hard. Uh, so where is UCI defined? Chess.format.uci. Locate UCI.scala. All right, so it's in the chess module. There's an object called a move. Uh, there's a case class drop, an object called a drop. Uh, is there a case class move? Yes, there is. So I was thinking, to add to this, I want to do something regarding flicks. Um, I'd want to put it here, say you have a key, you got a velocity, defining which piece you're moving, and how fast it's moving in what direction. Um, now as for how you would encode that, I'm not sure. Like, if you're going to put that in the same database where the move list goes, you have to have some way of printing out um, the key and direction. Uh, with whatever degree of precision is necessary. Um, so sure, that's going to take a lot more space in the database because there's a lot of velocities that are possible. Um, okay, to flick that scala. Okay, I didn't think so. Oh, I defined a flick as an event. Um, I don't know that I need to do that. Oh wait, there's an event called a mover drop. And a case class move, and an object move. Oh my goodness. Wait, I thought there were, the whole concept with this code is don't repeat yourself. And it appears we're repeating ourselves all over the place here. Um, how is this not a repetition of what's in that submodule? I guess these are events, the other things are moves, but still, a lot of these attributes are quite similar. Uh, FEN. I think FEN for flick chess can only encode these are the pieces still remaining on the board. Check for this doesn't apply. Threefold does not, it's always going to be false as is check is going to be false. State, I'm not sure what state refers to. Clock, you optionally have a clock. Possible moves, not, <laughs> possible moves is just wide open. Any move that uh, the client can generate as possible, but uh, in terms of showing move highlights and such, that's just going to be an empty list. Possible drops, again an empty list. Crazy data, um, again just going to be empty. Uh, crazy data equals crazy house data, which is all this extra information about I don't even understand why that's considered crazy data. Hmm. Oh. I guess if you're playing Crazy House, you get all this extra stuff bundled. Um. But apparently most of the time you don't get that. Um. I'm curious what this with crazy data does. Okay, first of all, let me go back to uh, the flick chess variant and see if we can standardize this a little bit. 
um, CD chess. So we want to define for this variant what's the win condition, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, not that I'm going to define the physics engine in the code, at least not yet. We can always do that later. Um, but we can't pretend that this variant's the same as other variants. So let's take a look at Racing Kings and then take a look at uh, Flick Chess. So, uh, allows castling. So here's an attribute we can already take over from Racing Kings into Flick Chess. Um, we can take this ver uh, thing and say that, you know, we don't allow castling uh, in this variant. There you go, that was simple. Um, and then we're going to grab these four lines and uh, say, not only are we not going to allow castling, we're not going to even use the standard initial position. We use a initial position that doesn't have castling rights. Um, now, pieces are still set up the same way. We just don't have castling rights, so the FEN string is not going to allow for that. Um, insufficient material. Great, let's take these. In fact, let's take all the rest of this and then see what we just need to prune out of here. We've already pruned out the starting positions. We're going to actually use this initial FEN. Actually, that's wrong. We want... Um, not that FEN, which would be pretty hilarious in itself. We want uh, Rook, Knight, Bishop, King, King, Rook, uh, Bishop, Knight, Rook, Pawn, 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 Four empty rows, a row of pawns, and a row of pieces. White to move, no castling rights. Um, reaches goal, reaches goal. We're not going to define that. Special end. Um, special draw, winner. We're not defining any of that just yet. King safety. Um, don't need to define any of that. Um, stalemate is going to be false. There we go. Stalemate is not possible. And Flick chess. All right, so is there anything we can borrow from any other variants, perhaps? Um, view, I don't know. We could take the chess 960 code and do flick 960, which would be hilarious, but anti chess.scala. Um, Winner. Yeah, I want to borrow some of this. Thirty six through twenty nine. Uh, I'm going to borrow this twenty nine. Yank however many lines of code that is. Um, paste it into here. Uh, in flick chess. The win condition 
Oh, I'm sorry. We can take this from Atomic Chess instead. Never mind. Um, and these three lines and drop them into here. So apparently we define that after insufficient wing material. Um, King has been captured. So yeah, and I suppose it's probably worth mentioning that there's no stalemate and there's the only game end condition is the checkmate condition. Um, so. Let's grab some of this goodness. 32 through, what's it here? 16. Um, let's just paste that in. Take our terminating condition. Um, let's paste it here. Chess, the king cannot be put into check, so always return false. Um, valid moves is just always going to be empty. I'm not sure how to create an empty list. Um, um, the only legal moves are to flick pieces. Um, so I wanted to return all moves, filter, not all moves. Uh, that'll do it, but I'm not sure if there's a cleaner way to do it, but that'll work. Um, surely there's a cleaner way to return an empty set, but what can you do? Um, return, this is a valid position if the, um, Situation board board dot king position that size is greater than or equal to one. Um, and board dot king position that size less than or equal to two. Um, Let's just say greater than or equal to one. And assume that the game setup will handle whether or not we need to have two kings. Um, I think that's about it for the special rules of the variant. Let me try to refresh this page. Again, it'll just reset the board, uh, assuming it compiles that code. But I think we've borrowed a whole bunch of rules from a whole bunch of other variants, none of which contradict what we've coded so far. None of which should prevent moves from being, um, or flicks from occurring. Uh, identifier expected, but false found. Okay. Uh, grab stalemate. I think 
think this needs to be stale capital mate. Uh, so, um, I'm going to take a look at. Apparently, I need to do this uh, assignment defining the data type. Stale mate. Oh, I'm sorry, this is how I do it. Instead of defining a function definition, we just express an expression. And we already know that false is a Boolean value. Um, let's try refreshing that. And we'll see this is indeed compiling in the background. Compiling one scale of source. Um, type mismatch. OK. So uh, all moves, filter not all moves is not working. Um, okay, what's the data type? A list of moves. Is there any way rep valid moves across everything? Um, <laughs> I guess this parameter um, should just be a Boolean parameter. Let's try that. Refresh. Filter not false is a pretty silly expression, but uh, I think it'll suffice. And we could even make that into a one-liner if we so desired. Um, type mismatch. Um, position... Da, da, da. Wait, why does that need anything more elegant? Um, Boolean false required position move returning a boolean. Um, okay, let's just comment out the rest of that line. Get this to compile again and then figure out is that the only compile error that we're dealing with at the moment? Or are there other compile errors to worry about? It is interesting having a chess variant in which um, there are no legal moves um, other than the flick pieces. There are no, um, well, basically a lot of the things that would be part of a normal chess game just aren't there. All right, so that compiled just fine. In fact, we can test that. I mean, see the board's inverted, see that I can flick the pawn. Um, see that I broke things. <laughs> this is why we test. Uh, I've lost my connection. Not sure why. Uh, inspect. Uh, WebSocket is closed before the connection is established. So I'm not sure what happened this game. Apparently flicking the pawn, though, did start the timer, but not really, because if I refresh, the timer's not going. Um, yeah, so maybe I do without this fanciness of saying that we don't have any valid moves. We'll figure that out later. Um, King threatens always equal to false. Um, this is flick chess, not anti chess. 
there's no checkmate condition the player's the winner if they have um hang on the winner is the current player if um the opponent's king is captured player whose opponent's king is captured. There we go. Um, that's probably fine. All right, verify I haven't broken anything. And probably checkpoint here if I can. Get diff. Uh, get status shows that this is the only file. In fact, I've modified. Um, saying we're not going to use a standard starting position. We're in fact going to use a custom starting position, which looks quite similar, but it's different. Um, and you know, assuming this refresh is just fine, it's still compiling at the moment, but. Should come back momentarily. I'll refresh as the opponent here. Make sure I'm reconnected to the socket. And we still see reconnecting up here at the top of the stream. Although that might be above the video capture. I think I my video capture captures the board as large as possible, so you don't necessarily see reconnecting above the board. <laughs> well, that was fun. Um, apparently it rejected the move, or something. I'm not sure what happened. Let's rematch. Agree to the rematch. Um, and let the opponent chuck something forward. So, we see that that indeed still works. Um, git commit start to define flick chess variant rule set uh, git push origin oops um git push origin that branch, except we don't want to do it to origin, we want to do it to my repo. There we go. So, it's not much. It really isn't much. Um, because the server still has no concept of what pieces are still part of the position. Um, to more clearly illustrate that point, and we add some more time on the clock just so I don't run out of time while I'm trying to demo this stuff. Um, so I could take this pawn. Oh, check it out. If I knock my king off the board, that also ends the game. Um, well, that's cool. I didn't know about that. It's a feature. So if I hit my own king just a slight distance, it's still on the board, that's okay. And if the opponent does likewise, or does similar, if they hit a pawn, um, you could end up with a position that looks quite similar to a previous position. Um, yeah. Well, that's the fastest way to end one of these games, for sure. Um, so how about that? That simplifies testing a little bit now, doesn't it? Um, we can go to the analysis board and see, you know, we got a normal analysis board. So there are no opening moves, there's no opening explorer for this variant and so forth. Um, can you imagine? Yeah, opening move, just like 
flick the pawn out there toward the middle. I don't know. There's all kinds of ways you could approach this game. I'm assuming that on a real chessboard, dexterity is a huge plus. Uh, there's some limits to this interface, and in some ways it feels like using a mouse is cheating, but I'm not sure. Um, so, should we go back and look at the game? Yeah. So, yeah, the position appears like a normal position here. And, um... We've started to implement the rule set, but it has a long way to go. Uh, at least we identify that the king cannot be threatened. I mean, the king's always threatened, because theoretically you could always shoot a piece to hit the opponent's king. Um, and even if it is threatened, I mean, what can you do? Because there's no check anyway. Check doesn't matter. The player can always knock your king off the board rather than... Um, deal with their king's situation. The winners, the player whose king is still on the board. Um, so yeah, let's take a little, take a moment, look at um, the physics engine that's used, which I assume is entirely in the presentation layer um, and has in no way been attempted to be coded into scale up. Um, Grip, put your eye, flick. Actually, I found flick here. Source. Um, which one of these is going to be the board? Like, if I'm looking at all these, which would I look at to see, like, apply, flick, something, grip, apply. Um, yeah, there's socket.js, but that couldn't possibly be the physics engine. Let's take a look at ground. <sighs> Holy crap, this is going to be complicated. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. I get the sense that this is going to take a lot more work to figure out the right way to do this. And it's probably not going to fit on Lee Chess anyway. It's probably going to be a thing that just resides on my server. But, you know, you never know. They might actually accept it. I'm not sure how they're going to handle this if they were to handle it. Can you imagine, like, Flick Chess Crazy House? You could place a piece anywhere on the board and then flick it. And if you capture something, it goes into your hand, and I mean, the possibilities are endless. Flick chess crazy house games could be insane. Just saying. Um, but where where's the physics? Grab collide. Grab capture. Okay. You must use some word to describe this. And yeah, I'm not seeing where to go to look for that. Um, view main.js. Render material, wheel, variant reminder, blind board, blurs and holds. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure where this all fits in. I know some changes were made to socket.js. But there's no way the physics engine could have been applied in here. Um, so, flick ground. Um, where is that defined? Hmm. 
locate flick brown .js. Um, it's got to be defined somewhere in my system. It's a node module. Um, huh. Okay, so that's an external module. Which I would have known if I had looked around a little bit. Um, um, so this defines all the code that's necessary to flick pieces on the board. Um, uh, where do I go? Oh, flick ground. Found the URL, guys. Like a needle in a haystack, but it's there. So I'm going to fork this because it seems too fun to not fork. Also, so I don't lose sight of where it was at, even though I have started. Um, <sighs> Mobile chess UI built with Mithril for Lee Chess. Okay. I don't suppose there's much documentation explaining how this works. <laughs> I don't know why would there be. Um, I'm assuming this is a simple, simple, simple change. Um... Chess ground is Lee Chess round? How is. Why would you do that? Anyway. Um, like most of these changes, you just replace chess ground with uh, flick ground, and that's okay. Um, after new piece, etc., and then after flick uh, gets applied, fine. I'm still not sure what Lee Chess Round here refers to as opposed to Chess Ground. Um, also, oh, I see. You got rid of the minified uh, Chess Ground min.js. Um, just, I guess, just two lines of code. For some reason he felt compelled to delete that so that we'd be forced to generate uh, chess ground. Okay, but my point of looking at that was to see that it was a pretty minimal change. Cannibalize chess ground for use in a projectile based flick chess game. Now we're talking. This is where stuff happens. I was looking for the word collide earlier. Didn't know that I'd have to look in a node module to go find it. Also didn't know that. Um, wait. Okay, so his changes in Leechus do not change these submodules that Leechus is using. Um, but hmm, I don't like this. Like it would have been interesting to see what does it take to take some of this and try to embed it into the Leechus code. And try to keep things up to sync. Um, or up to date. Because um, when was this checked in? When was this committed? This is committed 12 days ago. So, I mean, surely I didn't let this just linger out there for 12 days on the forum, right? Um, like, if I go back to Lee Chess. And we go back to the forum and see how long went between um, this new variant suggestion and when I responded to said variant suggestion. I don't think it was uh, two weeks. So obviously this took some time to develop. Um, two days ago, this was uh, commented on the forum. Um, 
took me how long to get a response out there? It took me a day, because I was kind of busy anyhow. Um, and then fellows out here saying, please find a way for this to be tested publicly. I've so far done that, but now I'm trying to figure out, is there a better way to integrate this and a way to prevent people from cheating? And I've actually deployed it and nobody's playing it. And anyway, um, but yeah, this got committed 12 days before um, he added that post in the forum. So worst case, he spent 12 days developing this only to find out that this is not the approach that Lee Chess is going to take, but I'm assuming he kind of understood that, but he added 931 lines of code in doing so. Um, probably a lot of that's copy and pasted. I just feel bad for the fellow if he thought that like we're going to integrate FlickGround out of his repository and just that that's kind of hidden dependency. Um, I'm sure he's learning Scala and learning stuff as the rest of we are. Um, the rest of us are all learning too. Uh, so yeah, we got all these animation steps. I haven't had a chance to look over any of this code because I wasn't didn't know about it. Um, wasn't in any way alerted to it. And it was kind of I could see that the code referenced this thing called flick ground, but I couldn't see where that was defined. Um, as I'm not so familiar with usage of NPM. Um, well, we're learning that, aren't we? Um, but yeah, this looks like a lot of math and computation. And he wrote this all... I mean, he, he says he tidied it up using Mithril, and I do believe him. Um, but I thought there's some way that some of the leeches, like... Scala code or templates get cross compiled to JavaScript. I could be imagining that. Uh, I thought there's like Scala.js, um, which helps ensure that things are taken from a functional th um, perspective, tested as functions, and then cross compiled with the same functional guarantees. Whereas I don't know if any of this um, math here is going to work the same way in every browser or not. I don't know if this is going to work the same way from a phone as other people were asking earlier today. Is uh, how's this going to work? Um, I don't put that much trust in my ability to read JavaScript. JavaScript's hard. API. So discrete test is a thing that's added to the API. Um, not sure what that's about. Um, this has been tidied with Mithril, so it is at least tidy. As opposed to some code we were looking at the other day, which was not so tidy, but that's okay. Um, oh, hey look, here's the win condition. Like I said, this is probably encoded in the client, and I was correct. Um, but that should be detected server-side rather than client-side, which means all the physics also have to be done server-side means a lot of stuff has to be recoded. Um, but I see as a concept of at least removing pieces from position. Um, I'm not sure how you would figure out uh, <laughs> if you had an after state. I guess to regenerate the before state, you'd either have to have that cached somewhere or you'd have to have um, the velocities of all the pieces um, and their ending velocity and some way to account for friction that might be semi-random. So yeah, I think you really need to cache the previous positions uh, in order to be able to do takebacks because there's computing that in reverse um, is super expensive computationally. Uh, collide.js defines how things collide, I'm sure. Oh, okay. So, thank goodness we have all this. So if people use user scripts 
uh, do customize or user scripts or user styles. Um, they're still bound by the same sets of rules that everybody else is bound by. It's not defined by how things um, are shaped in your view. It's defined by this set of constants, uh, how large each piece is. Though it could be fun to play um, with different piece sizes too, but no need to go there just yet. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't understand. Like, either he copied a lot of this code from somewhere, or he's just super excited about this variant and felt the desire to code everything all himself and not ask any questions before starting. <laughs> I'm guessing he was just really excited. Um, so yeah, that's cool. I just, that's a lot of dependencies and a lot of code to review and no code coverage, unfortunately. Doing things right is hard. Um, so I could understand why Oh, I'm sorry, the other reason I didn't respond for a day there was, I think I did see that um, post in the forum, but I was hoping that one of the moderators would get to it before I did, and after a day of them sitting on it and not responding, I decided to re respond. And now I'm trying to find a way to integrate it and figure out what does it mean to figure out the quality of JavaScript and Mithril and all this code here. Because it's pretty dubious to begin with and the simple answer is no just screw that not gonna bother with it but uh, you don't learn anything from that and that might be okay if you're busy um, I always have like a hundred things on my plate in part because I do take up all these challenges and I'm constantly pushing myself to try to figure out more and more things um, but at some point, you do have to cry uncle on some of this, too. It becomes a huge endeavor for one person to take on all this code all at once. Um, and at least I was able to get the code up and running. Which, unfortunately, was a bit of a struggle, but we got there. Um, so, I guess the next logical step would be to share with the developer and Holbert um, what I've done. So that seems like a sensible next step, even if it means that I'm probably not going to touch this for a while. Uh, chess ground. Is the that's not it. Ah, oh, what's it called? Um. I could have sworn it's called chess ground. What's the repository I've been pushing to lately? Scala chess. All right. Um, actually, here's a way to share stuff. I'm obviously not going to uh, pull request this into um, the official variant, but I can. Um, and share with the uh, developer what I've been changing. Pull request not to Ornicar, uh, but instead we're going to PR this to uh, uh, let's see Lee Chess names variants in English uh, Lee Chess uses English variant names. Um, I started to define the flick chess rule set. Um, however, certainly much um, logic currently in flick ground would need to be converted. Uh, however, 
Um, so far, I have not figured out, uh, I've not yet decided how to encode a flick um, as a Flip using a UCI uh, object in the move list, nor how to implement takebacks. Um, So, whoops, shit. I merged this to the wrong branch. Merge PR to the wrong branch. Um, Okay, edit this, cancel, ah, oh, damn it. Um, I wanted to merge it to his version of the branch. Uh, I rebased this code upon upstream master. So we're starting from the same code base. Okay, create PR, whatever. Um, oh, that gets messy now, doesn't it? Whatever, so upstream. Uh, they had some successful testing with Stockfish. That's cool. Um, I submitted to your chess ground a PR, although I probably incorrectly, although the PR uh, involves a rebase, so I'm not sure how it will merge. Including basic rules uh, atop upstream master. So, yeah, there we go. So, yeah, if he wants to work together on that, great. It's probably too much work for both of us. It's probably just best to leave it up and running. People can play this. It's good fun. Um, but we're not going to get very far here. So, just to illustrate the concept... I think anybody looking at this on the stream could figure out that something is awry with what's gone on here. Between half the pieces being upside down, um, and, uh, well, just a whole bunch of things going on here. So, again, zero spectators, but it's not the prime hour for spectating anyway. Um, I uh, still can't get a game of this going. That's okay. Um, I think once I get spectating working, which to get spectating working, I have to be able to encode the moves as actual moves, and to be able to do that, get the move list working and everything, it's going to be a huge ordeal. Um, 
so not sure what to do.